welcome back to your favorite segment over here on my channel, Out of the Vault. If you are new, let me just say welcome, it is a pleasure to have you, and to all of you, my wonderful, intelligent, and respectful Out of the Vault faithful, I'm sure that this is the video that you have all been dying to finally see show up on my channel. Today, we are finally going to be discussing the 61st Disney canon classic from, t from 2022, Strange World, starring the voices of Dennis Quaid, Jake Gyllenhaal, Gabrielle Union, and Lucy Liu. So, let's first get the elephant in the room out of the way. Lawn Gnome, is this really as bad of a movie as people say that it is? That's a very good question, because there are a lot of elements that are going to explain, at least in my opinion, why and where this movie stands in regards to all the Disney canon classics. I will say, however, bluntly, no, this is not the worst Disney movie that I have ever seen. And for the very first time on this channel, I can proudly say that is coming from a person who has seen all 61 Disney canon classics. When you take a look at the dreck, the real bottom of the barrel when it comes to the Disney canon classics, you see movies like Dinosaur, Home on the Range, and a lot of others that can be quite controversial. In my opinion, I would throw movies like The Aristocats, I would throw The Black Cauldron down there, I would throw a movie like Brother Bear down there as well. But I don't think Strange World falls along with them. But then when you take a look at the elites, like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, The Little Mermaid, Cinderella, no, it does not even stand with them either. This movie, at least for me, is definitely somewhere in the middle, but it's leaning a little towards the bottom. And there are many reasons why that is. It deals with matters that come from within the movie, and what come from the movie all around it. So, But at least let's talk about some of the good things about this film. I will definitely say that one of the strongest things about this film is definitely the look of it. I mean, it's Disney animation, you can tell based on all the CGI Disney films that we've had in the past, and a lot of improvements as well, but the world that is the strange world is so intriguing and captivating, and it is truly living up to the name of this film. But then we lead into the faults within the movie. I think that this movie suffers from a major identity crisis because I don't think we truly understand what this movie is trying to be. I mean, it starts off with a grand explorer named Jaeger Clade who has a son named Searcher, and they become an exploration team, and the ultimate goal for them is to give the people of their city of Apollonia wonder and knowledge, and more importantly, grand discoveries. And one of the biggest mysteries that has been in Jaeger Clade's mind is this vast mountain range that surrounds them. What is on the other side? And he and his son go on many expeditions, and on one expedition, Searcher happens to find something in the wilderness that he thinks could be the knowledge that they truly need and that they don't need to venture any further. And then that, jo that creates a rift between father and son. So is this movie a story about family? Because after that, we see Searcher have his family. He has a wonderful wife, Meridian. He has... He has a loving son named Ethan, and then he finds out that the gift that he brought back to the people seems to have an issue. So then he has to step into his father's shoes and go on another grand exploration. So is this a story about Searcher trying to find himself and what he truly is? And then we take a look at his son, who is also trying to figure out who he is and what he wants to be. Then, as the movie goes on, and the hijinks ensue, we find out a very interesting thing about the strange world. Is it actually a world at all? And then we figure out, because it's not extremely hidden, but it's not overly preachy, that this movie could possibly be an allegory for climate change. You see what I mean? It's got so many eggs in one basket, 
it really seems to cause a lot of confusion and really get the audience truly lost in what this film really is trying to tell you. I mean, there are definitely some good moments. I don't think there were as many funny moments as there usually are in Disney films, and I feel that when there were some funny moments, they really did try too hard. And because of the fact that there are all these plot points, a lot of the character development is so lackluster that you don't even remember who these characters are and what they're all about. I mean... I'm not going to lie, and I don't like to talk about my personal faults, but this is my fifth time recording this video because I have been having so many difficult points trying to remember the characters, even by a name basis. And I mean, even a wonderful score from Henry Jackman even gets lost in this movie too because... It's just way too much, and I also think that because you're getting way too much, the film seems rushed, which adds to the lack of development in the world and in the characters. The other big issue with this movie is definitely the fact that this movie was poorly marketed to the people. This is not the first time that this has happened, and I'm pretty sure that this is not the first time that this ever happened with Disney, because... We could take a look at a movie like The Rescuers Down Under, which is a great movie, by the way, but after it didn't do well in the box office, they just stopped advertising. This movie never even got the beginnings of an advertising campaign. I think there was a teaser trailer. That's when I heard about it. I mean, I always like to see what's coming out, so I always like to do my research, so I knew that this movie was coming out, but I didn't see anything about it. And then when I did see something about it, it looked interesting, and then it just went total blackout. We didn't get anything. We might have gotten a TV spot here and there like a day before the release of the film. And then after that, we got absolutely nothing. So the fact that this movie was poorly marketed gave parents poor judgment in regards to bringing their extremely young kids to see this film. Because parents who took their four, five, and six, and maybe even their seven-year-olds to see this film... There were a lot of people that said that the kids found this movie very, very boring, and they just didn't understand it. And that's because of the fact that this movie is not for little kids. It's really not. This is really for 10 to 14-year-olds. But of course, not many 13, 14, and even 12-year-olds want to go see a Disney animated film when there are plenty of other movies out there that are more fit for them. I mean, when it comes to people who are Disney fans who are within the tweens and early teens, they'd rather go to a Star Wars or an MCU film than go see a Disney canon classic or even a Pixar film these days. That's just the way kids are. It's not their fault. And then there are some people, and this might be my own personal opinion, but I believe that this was definitely a movie that was tampered with in regards to its performance, because, I mean, this is the movie that did lose Bob Chapek his job, and then Bob Iger stepped in. I don't know if he personally wanted it to fail. I don't know if there were other people on the staff that wanted this movie to fail, but this movie did not go straight to streaming, much like some of the Pixar films before it. This movie went to the theaters, and no one really cared for it because nobody knew about it. So, like I said... This movie was destined to fail in the box office, and now we're at a point where we take a look at what Disney has been since the pandemic. I would probably think that since Encanto, there really hasn't been a great Disney film anywhere from Disney. And when I say anywhere, that means Pixar films, Star Wars films, Marvel films, and Disney is bleeding money right now. The glory days of Disney seem to be long gone after a point where they almost truly hit rock bottom and got themselves back into the neo-renaissance thanks, thanks to John Lasseter. But we all know what happened to him, unfortunately. And now Disney seems to be going right back to where they are, but the problem is right now they really can't seem to stop the bleeding. And it's sad, because not only are people not interested in going to see their movies... They're not even interested in going to their theme parks right now. It's really painful for someone who truthfully loves Disney to say these types of things. What about some of their future projects? Am I excited for the new Pixar film, Elemental? It looks cute. I saw the trailer, 
but I'm getting major Zootopia vibes. Am I interested in a sequel to Inside Out? Sure, but I don't know if it's going to be good. I mean, I think it was a movie that deserved a sequel because there were so many questions that were needing to be answered, especially the one which is, will anger actually push the big red button in the sequel? And then we hear about the new Disney canon classic, which is called Wish, which is about the origins of the Disney thematic wishing star. I, I don't know. And the fact that the only thing that Disney seems to want to do right now is just create new modern versions, which are live action, of Disney canon classics, and now they're just failing at the box office one by one by one. Disney's in a really big predicament. I mean, even with a strong cast that you actually get in Strange World. It's not a bad cast at all. These are very well-known actors. But you take a movie like Bolt. Not a lot of people went to see that movie. The people who did see it didn't think it was the greatest, but there were some people that found good things in it. I personally thought it was a cute movie when I finally saw it. But the fact that this was a movie that starred John Travolta and Miley Cyrus, when were you ever going to see John Travolta voice a character in a Disney film? Or how about way back in the day when David Spade and John Goodman were in The Emperor's New Groove? That movie is not perfect, but it definitely was funny and memorable for many. So it's a very big risk when you go in new directions, especially when it comes to a Disney film. And the truth of the matter is, I'm not someone who has anything against a movie trying to be an allegory for something that's very important like climate change. But if you really want to send the message to kids, you got to make it much simpler. If you want to see a movie that explains things like endangering the environment that kids can truly understand, it's not the greatest movie, but I'm a big fan. Go rent the 1990 Jetsons the movie. Just rent that movie. It's a, such an easier way to explain those things to young children. And then, of course, there's the other thing that just steams me when it comes to movies these days. All these people that talk about the politics and the diversity and the LGBTQ references and the strong women, weak men references. The truth is... If those were what you were going into this movie to look for and to mock, then the fact that you hated this movie makes complete sense to me. I'm actually very glad that these people showed me that these things were actually going to be in the movie. And because of the fact that I knew that they were going to be in this movie, I knew that it was going to be just for me to decide, are they what drives the movie? And if they're not what drives the movie, is the story good? They don't necessarily drive the movie. They don't. And that's not a bad thing at all. It's present, it's noticeable, and it's just an addition to character development. That's all it is. But the story's not that good either because of the way that it is just so muddled and so hodgepodge with so many different plots. And it's just so confusing and rushed that it just takes away from everything. As long as your story is good, your movie is going to be good. It doesn't matter if your cast is diverse. It doesn't matter if you have a very strong female character and a not-so-strong male character, because not once did the female characters in this movie drag the male characters down. At least I didn't see it. I mean, I'll just give one small spoiler. People seemed to be mocking this movie because they said even the dog was handicapped. So what? The dog was cute. I mean, he's not as cute as Dante from Coco, but Legend the dog had his moments. So this movie is what it is. All I can say is that Strange World just made me upset about Disney as a whole and very skeptical about their future, just because of everything that's going on right now. If there's anyone that is to blame, I just go to the heads up there. It's their fault. It's not the fans' fault. It's not the writers' fault. It's the people who are in charge that are the ones, at the end of the day, that are going to create the profits. Disney needs to go into a very serious overhaul right now. 
and they really need to look inside and figure out if there is any magic left. Because if that magic is truly gone, then Disney will be gone too. Strange World is going to get a star and a half from me. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please leave your comments in the box below. And let's talk about Strange World. I'm hoping that we can create a good conversation. A good, rational, and reasonable conversation, and maybe even a debate with those exact same categories. But I'm just hoping that when I see you in the next one, guys, I'll be a little bit more cheerful about the movie that I will be bringing to the table to review with you. But until then, take care. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, feel free to leave a comment. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want to be up to date with our latest videos. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words.